Reclaim your summertime in Grapevine and rediscover an exciting summer full of fun. Play hard, chill out, have fun, and get away. It's summertime in Grapevine. Bring the whole family and make some memories. Now through Labor Day, shop on Main Street and Grapevine Mills. Dine at our new Harvest Hall. Check out our new Grapevine Main Station, Sea Life Aquarium, Lego Land Discovery Center, museums, wineries, galleries, fireworks, and more. Reclaim your summer at summertimeandgrapevine.com. All right, North Tulsa Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram Hotline. We welcome in Chris Vanini, our guest who uh, covers college sports, does so for the athletic. Thanks for joining us, Chris. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, I want to ask you because I have reacted similarly to how you reacted about yet another conference realignment situation going on. We know about the story with Oklahoma and Texas, and we played or, or talked about some of the comments John Skipper had recently from ESPN, who they could be in trouble with the Big 12 right now because they're seen as someone who's trying to influence what happens with these conferences. Are we overreacting, Chris, or can college sports still be really good regardless of conference realignment? Well, I mean, I don't think anything completely different is happening anytime soon. Texas and Oklahoma aren't leaving the Big 12 for a couple of years still, and any other realignment is going to take more time. You know, but but I do think we're on the road. Maybe it's ten years from now or something where we get either a couple mega conferences or one single super league or, or something like that. And and I don't, I'm not a fan of that. That's what I wrote on Monday. I said conference realignment sucks and it's taken away a lot of what we love about college sports. And that's the the, the regionalization of the game. Uh, it's about you know, knowing people who are in your own league, working with people who went to schools in your own league, rivalries that are about goofy-looking trophies. That stuff's been more important to fans than than money or even who wins the national championship for the most part. So, uh, you know, it, 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 this is speeding us up down the path. I think that's something a lot of people won't like at the end. Chris Vanini joining us on the show. Did you go to Michigan State? I did. All right, this is because I use this argument with like it's not an argument, I, I but I think it's it's a point that I have as an outsider. Like you went to Michigan State, you don't sound like an old guy. Did you go to college while D'Antonio was there? Yes, right when he started. Okay, pretty successful then program at that point. A lot of pride in that school. A lot of lot of alum thing like that. Lyman went to Ohio State. Okay, obviously a big football school. You know, I went to Akron. Not a very big football school here. And a lot of people who I'm with, they're big Ohio State fans. They did not go to Ohio State. I think for a lot of the fans of the big-time schools, it's almost like, and you may be offended by this, but I think it's true. I think as long as they keep up appearances, as, as long as there's the traditions on game day that we've known, while it may ring hollow to you up at Spartan Stadium or to Lima at Ohio Stadium, for a lot of us, we'll just go in there and it'll be the same as it's always been. And we just want to, they'll still get their Michigan game and they'll still want to beat the top teams and compete for a national championship. And I, I just don't know if it's going to matter to the regular fan. Well, I, I think there's a point to that. And I started off the, 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 the column I wrote on Monday by comparing this to the European Super League that happened in the spring when 10 or 12 of the best, richest teams in soccer uh, we're going to create their own postseason. And that created a lot of backlash among fans, but it was among the fans of those rich teams. They thought it had gone too far. Excuse me. And, and and they created the backlash. They're the ones who prevented it from happening. That's not happening here. Texas fans want to go to the SEC. Oklahoma fans want to go to the SEC. And so it, it, it's where things kind of deviate a little bit, where everybody kind of looks out, for their own team at, at the end of the day. And if you're one of those teams that's going to be a winner, then you're generally fine with it. And really those are the only people who have any power of preventing anything from happening. So we're, we're certainly going down this road, uh, whether people like it or whether they don't like it. All right. Well, now that we seem to be going down this road, I guess my question, uh, Chris is what is it going to look like? Uh, what does the big 10 do as a response? What does Notre Dame do? How does the ACC look? I mean, we've been through these wild changes in conferences uh, over the last 10, 15 years. How even much more wild is it going to get? Well, there isn't an obvious... There isn't... Chris, you okay over there? Uh, Yep. 
like, yeah, I just swallowed something the wrong way. Th- there isn't an obvious easy move like picking up Texas or Oklahoma because nobody left over in the Big 12 will move the needle that same way. So if you're the Big Ten, if you're the Pac-12, do you have to do something wacky? Do you have to do a merger of your two leagues? Do you, If you're the Big Ten, do you try to take half of the Pac-12? The ACC is in a tough spot because their TV deal is through 2036. And the only way that's changing is if they add Notre Dame. And Notre Dame is not interested at all in doing that. So there aren't a lot of clear moves unless it's something drastic. And clearly the SEC is the one that's trying to push the envelope, push things forward, while everybody else is trying to, I think, maybe slow this down a little bit. And then as it relates to the major conferences, I'm not really sure what they do next unless someone takes a really big step. I know none of us are that naive to believe this isn't always about the money, but do you think name image likeness, the fact that now the athletes are getting paid, that expedited this where the SEC is like, all right, now that we uh, basically showed everybody what this is all about, we can just admit now it's all about money that much more and we should try to get more money. Did, did name image likeness expedite this? Not, not specifically. I, I think those changes along with the, the losses, the NCAA's losses in court and Mark Emmert's recent announcement that they want to decentralize the NCAA and give more power to conferences, I, I think Greg Sankey knows there's a, there's a, there was a real opportunity to grab a bunch of power. Because if you have the majority of the the football kings, you can either form your own breakaway football league. You can you can you can essentially get to a point where you can make your own rules. And I think that's something they see at the end of this road. There's a ton of money that comes with that, absolutely. But I think it's a mix of of money and power at a time when the NCAA doesn't have much, and it's you know potentially giving some of that up. Chris Vanini joining us on the show. You know, there were a lot of Ohio State fans who were upset with, it seemed like Gene Smith kind of stayed in line with the Big Ten, was supported with the Big Ten. And, you know, through all the COVID stuff, people were getting kind of upset about that as the season was stopped and restarted and all this other stuff. There's a lot of schools that are throwing their weight around. Could Ohio State ever throw their weight around and threaten to leave the Big Ten? It could. I mean, we're a couple years away from from that TV grant of rights working, but uh, you know the one reason the Big Ten's been successful and been around for a hundred years is because everybody has looked out for everybody else in the conference. Uh, Ohio State and Indiana and, and Northwestern would get the same payout essentially from the league. But if in moving forward, the Big Ten's still going to make a ton of money. But if Ohio State looks at what the SEC is doing and thinks, "Hey, this is a chance to form a breakaway league." I think it's possible they look at it. I, I, I think, you know, it's understandable at some point if people at Ohio State want to – don't want to have to deal with the Rutgers and the Maryland's and the Indiana's of the world. But that's, again, kind of what is changing about college sports is that there was – a lot of people have told me, ADs and stuff, that, frank, you know, there used to be, frankly, a, a collegiality among the leaders, among the commissioners and the ADs. And now it's – everybody's starting to look out for themselves – and while the, if it's about money, Ohio State doesn't need to leave. They'll be fine. But if, if the SEC convinces them, like, hey, this is where the power is going to be, this is where the action is going to be, it's possible maybe Ohio State and Michigan decide to jump ship. I, I certainly think it's unlikely. But I think at this point anything's possible with, with, the, with what the SEC clearly planning is it more likely I think it is but I want to ask you more likely that this is the demise of the big 12 instead of maybe some other schools looking to join the big 12 or the big 12 bringing up like a UCF Cincinnati scenario something like that I I don't know because everybody I've talked to in college sports has said the big 12 would be more valuable together if you keep those eight together because it's unlikely any of them are going to get picked off if a couple of them get picked off by by the Pac-12, the Big Ten, yeah, it'll fall apart. But if the eight of them stay together, they have a TV deal through 2024, 25. They're going to get like $150 million from Oklahoma and Texas in buyout. And they're still an autonomous conference, a Power Five conference in the eyes of NCAA governance. That's a lot. That, that's a lot. And it's a, it's a playoff moves forward with 
12 teams and six guaranteed spots, it's pretty, probably a guaranteed spot for the Big 12 most years. So there's a lot of value there if they keep it together, and that's why I think the Big 12 is accusing ESPN of trying to sabotage this whole thing and break them up because ESPN doesn't want to pay that money, and if the Big 12 breaks up, Texas and Oklahoma don't need to pay all that money. Um, so they believe ESPN is trying to orchestrate this falling apart because they know there's a lot of money still to be made. Uh, so, so we'll see. I don't really know which way that's going to go. But but that's it's not it's not a guarantee that the eight of them break up. All right, Chris. Oh, we appreciate you coming on. Break it all down. I hope you're I hope you're okay. I was a little worried about you halfway through the interview, but you you <laughs> stuck it out. You persevered. Uh, we'll see if the Big Twelve ends up being able to stick it out and persevering because right now it doesn't look so good. Yep, we will see. Uh, every day, clearly something new happens. So who knows what, what's out? What's alleged next? All right, we'll do this again. Hopefully, talk actual college football and not realignment. Thank you, Chris. Yep, thanks for having me. Right there he is, Chris Vanini of The Athletic. Reclaim your summertime in Grapevine and rediscover an exciting summer full of fun. Play hard, chill out, have fun, and get away. It's summertime in Grapevine. Bring the whole family and make some memories. Now through Labor Day, shop on Main Street and Grapevine Mills. Dine at our new Harvest Hall. Check out our new Grapevine Main Station, Sea Life Aquarium, Lego Land Discovery Center, museums, wineries, galleries, fireworks, and more. Reclaim your summer at summertimeandgrapevine.com.